Good morning, everyone. Um, Ms. Chavez will be translating for me today, but I think she's muted right now. So I'm going to wait for her to unmute herself. Good morning. <laughs> okay. Good <laughs> Sorry. Morning. That's okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm getting ready here. I'm yeah. Down. Okay. I'm getting mute now for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Thank you, Ms. Chavez. All right. Um, so um, if you need translation, si necesita traducción, por favor, busquen la opción de idiomas haciendo clic en el símbolo del mundo en la parte baja de su pantalla. Um, and you can have translation by our amazing parent rep, Ms. Chavez. Um, and if you have questions, please use the Q&A button or type in the chat. All right. Um, I also put in a link inside the chat for you to sign in. So please sign in today. Um, I really appreciate all of you have taken the time to attend. I'm sure there's lots of questions around um, everything that's going on right now. So let's get started. Um, again, the sign in link is in the chat. Please sign in. Um, the first thing um, we'll go over today are a few brief announcements. Then I'll show you our um, Title I budget for this year and what we spent that money on. Um, I'll give you COVID updates. I'm sure that's what most of you are here for. Um, we'll have Daniela from Gear Up make um, some brief announcements and Ms. Martinez, who will talk a little bit about attendance. And of course, we'll end with Q&A. All right, so first a few announcements. Um, fall grades um, were great. We ended with an 85% pass rate for all of our students in A through G classes. I'm really proud of that accomplishment for our students. I want to commend them. It was not an easy semester. And so I'm really, really proud. Our monthly attendance rates for this year are down. And as you can see for January, they're really down. And this is primarily because um, students unfortunately are getting sick and when they get sick we ask them to stay home. I don't mind attendance being down as long as it's for valid reasons um, like illness and Ms. Martinez will talk more about that. I want to make sure everyone is aware of the COVID symptoms and encourage you to please keep your child home if they're exhibiting any of these symptoms. So um, I know a lot of these symptoms seem very common, something you would feel if you had a cold or a flu, but considering how um, contagious this new version of COVID is, even if you're not sure, please keep your child home and get them tested as soon as possible and send them back if, it's, if they're negative. Unfortunately, during this time, COVID has also affected our staff and we are very short staffed. Typically, we would have um, four people in the office to help answer questions. We started the year with only two now we are back up to three. Thank you, Sonia, Marna, and Sandra. And But we're still down one person, and that will be for a while. Um, we also have some um, absences in our teaching staff and our counseling staff, and that is ongoing. And please be patient with us. I know we have been slow to answer phone calls, um, and that is because we're doing the best we can and we are short staffed. Lastly, I wanna make sure that all of you let your students know and that you know yourself that if there's something of concern to you that you would like to report anonymously, 
there is a see something say something form on our website. I'll play this video again so you can see how to access it. It's really important that if a student feels bullied or threatened that they come and talk to a counselor. Sometimes students witness these types of events and they don't feel comfortable letting us know. I wanna encourage them to let us know, but if they're more comfortable reporting through the see something, say something form, they can do that. Again, it's on our website and our website is stemweb.org and I'm putting that in the chat. Next, I'd like to talk a little bit about our Title I budget. The STEM Academy receives different kinds of funds like all schools in Los Angeles Unified. And one of those um, funds is called Title I and it is specifically for students who are low income or EL, English language learners. And the money that we received was spent on the items you see on the screen per the recommendations of the ELAC parent committee and our school site council parents. So for example, we purchased um, three bilingual teacher assistants, um, an instructional coach, an additional counselor. So we typically would only get one counselor, but we spent our Title I money so make sure we have another counselor. Um, we also purchase a PSA counselor, that would be Ms. Martinez. We purchase additional days of a school psychologist to help students um, with different types of trauma. Um, we purchase a half-time Title I coordinator and a half-time teacher, this is Mr. Doer, to reduce class size and to help us manage these funds. We also put a lot of money into what's called X time. It's, addi it's additional time or overtime to encourage our teachers to make sure they offer support like tutoring um, before and after school for our students. Um, a little bit of that money goes into maintaining our copier, our Toshiba copier, because it does break down a lot. And that is how we spent our Title I funds this year. And some COVID updates. Um, I'll go through this slowly. And if you have questions, please feel free to put them in the chat or in the Q&A and I'll answer them as we go. So, um, we opened the year with 84 positive cases. This was from baseline testing. So this is when um, students tested before school opened during the week of January 3rd. And last week when we tested on Wednesday, we had 49 more students who tested positive. We performed contact tracing. These are students who were close to those who tested positive, and we had over 150 students who were close contacts. And this contact tracing has been very um, overwhelming for our staff, and we're having difficulties in tracking all of the close contacts, which is why I want to encourage all of you to be aware that while students are not required to wear medical grade masks, we are recommending that they do. Meaning we recommend non-cloth masks. They should be surgical style with a over the nose wire so that it can clip tightly around the nose. And if your student is going to wear two masks, like if they're going to double mask, the cloth should be on top of the surgical mask, not underneath. So on your face should be the surgical style mask and on top can be the cloth mask. 
it should fit well, meaning it shouldn't fall down. And if you're having a hard time finding these types of masks, our office does have them and we can give them to your students. They just need to come and ask. All of our employees are required to wear the surgical style mask and they do not wear cloth masks anymore. There is a question in the Q&A. Um, can someone help me translate it? It's, Carla, can you see it? Or Daniela, the second one. She's um, asking, she's saying mostly everybody has gotten sick and that's why my daughter hasn't gone to school. How are we gonna do with her, assist, with her attendance? Or what are we gonna do with her attendance? So Ms. Martinez will go over what types of attendance is considered excused, like when you miss school and what type is not considered excused. So when a student uh, tests positive or they are a close contact, they are asked to stay home. Those absences are excused. And Ms. Martinez will give you some examples of absences that are not considered excused when I'm done talking about COVID specifically. All right. The next slide might be a little confusing. I apologize. I'm going to take my time with it. And please, again, ask questions. All of our students fall into um, when they test for COVID, fall into three categories. The first category are students who test positive. These students, the default is that they're supposed to isolate for 10 days. It doesn't matter if you're symptomatic or not symptomatic, if you're vaccinated or not vaccinated. If you are positive, Again, the default is that you have to isolate for 10 days. You can come back early. You can come back on day six, but that's only if you have, you take an antigen test on day five, not before that, on day five, and you have no symptoms. Again, you need to stay home for 10 days. And if you want to come home, come back to school early, um, you must take an antigen test on day five. You can get that at Webster Middle School, or you can go to your own doctor or clinic, and you must be not symptomatic. Our students who are fall in this category also then cannot take a PCR test for three months, 90 days. This is because they're likely to test positive again, even though they're not sick anymore, and even though they don't have symptoms. And when they test again and do a PCR test, it re-triggers quarantine unnecessarily. So if your child has tested positive in the last three months, make sure they do not take a PCR test again for three months, that's 90 days. Make, and in order you know, to make sure they follow that rule, that positive test should be in daily pass. Um, there's a question about exceptions regarding surgical masks. If the allergic, a, a student is allergic to the material, there are exemptions, but they require that the student has a doctor's note that states what their medical condition is in order to have an exemption. And we would find a different type of mask for them to wear. Um, the question is, um, will the school give at-home tests? I'm assuming COVID tests. Yeah, currently the school does not have at-home tests. They are only available for positive cases at Webster Middle School. I have um, complained to Los Angeles Unified regarding how far Webster is for most of our parents. 
and they have told me that they are working on a closer site. I just don't know when that will be. Okay, the second category for our students who test um, with us is the students who are close contacts and they are either unvaccinated close contacts or they are symptomatic. Like they could be vaccinated with symptoms or unvaccinated with symptoms or just unvaccinated. So these are people who were within six feet for longer than 15 minutes of students who tested positive and they themselves are unvaccinated or symptomatic. The rules for them are very similar to a positive case, meaning the default is you have to quarantine or isolate for 10 days. And again, the only day that, the way they get to come back early, which is like come back on day six, is if they take a test on day five and test negative and have no symptoms. So again, if your student was a close contact and they were either unvaccinated or had symptoms, they have to quarantine for 10 days. If you would like them to come back early on day six, they need a test on day five. This doesn't have to be an antigen test. They can take a regular PCR test and those tests are being given at every stationary site in LAUSD. There's 12 of them across the district. And you can find that on the LAUSD website. Okay, the last category are the close contacts who are vaccinated um, and not symptomatic, they're immune. And the rule for them is that they get to stay at school. But what happens is they have to make sure they don't miss that weekly test at STEM Academy. So we're testing on Wednesdays and they need to make sure that they get tested and they continue to test negative. We're also asking them, we give them a surgical style mask and we're asking them for those 10 days after exposure to make sure that they are wearing a surgical style mask. Um, thank you, Sonia, for letting everyone know that yes, the post office is giving free um, COVID home tests. I posted the link on Schoology, so you're everyone who has Schoology access can see that link. And there is another question. Are there still unvaccinated students on campus? Yes, there are. There are approximately, for STEM, about 28 unvaccinated students. And for some of these students, they have one dose and they're still waiting to get their second dose. For others, there are medical exemptions. And for others, they simply are um, putting it off. So we have, you know, less than 1% of our population who is currently unvaccinated. So those are the three categories. Um, I know there's a lot of details in this, but I wanted to make sure you um, had an overview of how community engagement is asking schools to manage their positive cases and close contacts. Can someone help me with the question in the chat? If they're positive and vaccinated mm -hmm. and have positive. no symptoms, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, are they gonna be at school? No, if you, it doesn't matter whether you're vaccinated or symptomatic if you test positive. Positive cases must quarantine for 10 days. And again, the only way you get to come back early is if you test negative with an antigen test, because you're positive, you can't take a PCR test. So with a rapid test, you test negative on day five. If you take it earlier, it doesn't count. And then you can come back early. 
But other than that, if you're positive, all bets are off. You, you stay home for 10 days. Vanessa asked if vaccines aren't mandatory anymore. Um, so the mandatory um, LAUSD put off vaccines being mandatory and pushed it to fall. So they become mandatory in the fall of 22. All right. The next slide is about what happens when someone in your household tests positive. Recently, Los Angeles Unified changed the rules regarding positive cases in um, the household. So for example, let's say um, an uncle that lives with you tests positive. Basically, from the moment they find out they're positive, the student who lives with that person must quarantine for a minimum of 10 days. The first five are considered the, the quarantine days for that individual who tested positive, and then the next five are specifically for the student. In total, it's 10 days, and they must test negative to return. And if they don't, they have to quarantine for another five days. The only people that don't have to do this are vaccinated asymptomatic students who are exempt from quarantining. So again, if someone in your home tests positive, the student must quarantine for 10 days. So if the question is, if my um, son tests positive, they can't take a PCR test. And on Wednesdays, um, what is it? They take a rapid test or no test? Great question. So uh, anyone who tests positive wouldn't take any tests on Wednesdays. They don't take any, they don't do rapid or PCR tests, no tests on Wednesdays. And that's for three months. Danetta. All right, I'm gonna end my COVID thing with some common mistakes that we see students making. The first is um, they get COVID symptoms but they don't get tested right away or they come to school. Um, this really spreads COVID. So again, if your student isn't feeling well, get them tested right away and don't send them to school. The second mistake we see a lot is a student will test positive and then they'll go and get a test, PCR test again, over and over. Some students will get a PCR test three, four, five times, and it will re-trigger their quarantine. Again, if you test positive, you should not be getting PCR tested for the next three months, and that includes our weekly tests. Third most common mistake we see is that a student will get a COVID test outside of the district, but they won't upload their results. So we have no way of knowing that they should be allowed again or disallowed and their daily pass doesn't update. So whether negative or positive, it's really important to upload outside test results. The fourth common mistake we see is that um, our students sometimes will be absent on Wednesdays. That's when we have our weekly test and they miss it. And when we contact them and tell them to go to LeCant for makeup testing on Friday, they miss that one too. When that happens, their daily pass becomes disallowed. So it's really important for students to go get that makeup test at LeCant or get tested on their own. And lastly, the last sort of mistake we see that sometimes happens is that the parent doesn't call community engagement and 
that's the only department in LAUSD that can clear daily passes. So even though our students test negative and they can come back after being a close contact or testing positive, if there is no contact with community engagement, their daily pass still shows them as disallowed. And the school site staff, myself included, have no control over this. I can't change their daily pass. And so we always give the number, the community engagement number to our students. And um, we encourage you to call them right away as soon as anything happens, whether the student tests positive or whether they are a close contact. Um, is Wednesday testing mandated for all students and staff, no exemptions? That is correct. The only exception is if a, a student or staff already tested positive, then they should not test for three months. Um, this week, I don't, um, can someone help me with Sophia? Yeah. <laughs> this week, the daily pass wasn't working. And where, is that, where does that problem come from? And then that's the first part of the question. The second part is um, they called me that my daughter didn't go to three classes, but she's registered. Um, okay. she says, I think you have to um, review that well because it's affecting a lot of the students and it's not fair. So the daily oh. pass issues are coming from the district. So when the daily pass doesn't work, what we do is we print a list of the allowed students and disallowed, and we check their names against that. And again, the school doesn't have any control over what happens with daily pass. And the district is aware of the difficulties that daily pass experiences on the first day of school, seemingly every time this happens. And Unfortunately, they have not addressed it yet. But trust me, they're hearing plenty of complaints, both from um, parents and from staff. In terms of receiving phone calls about absences for different periods, those phone calls are generated automatically and they don't come from the school, they come from the district. So when a student is here, comes to school, but let's say they don't go to second period, then automatically LAUSD sends a phone call home. Sometimes this happens because the student is late to class and the teacher already took role. And that phone call goes out in the first 10 minutes of class. So if the student is arriving after the teacher has submitted role, which is all electronic, it's online, then the parent gets a phone call automatically that the student is absent. Later, the teacher will fix the attendance, but the phone call has already gone out and there's nothing we can do about that. If you have a parent portal account, you can log in and see if your student was actually tardy or present for that class or for any classes. Um, and what's the next one? He's saying that they complete their daily pass like at 6.30 or 7 in the morning and, and they can quickly complete it at that hour. I've heard the same thing. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Munar. Yes, I've heard the same thing from several students and staff too, that they do it earlier. And um, when they do it early, they have an easier time. Are teachers going to give time and tutoring for homework because students have to miss school due to COVID-19? Absolutely, teachers have a list of students who are absent because of COVID-related reasons. And all students who are absent due to illness um, are allowed to make up any work 
that they miss for full credit. And teachers also have Zoom links for tutoring. And they are reaching out to those students to make sure that all the work is being made up. Those links are also on our website. All right, I'm going to now, I forget who's next, either Daniela or Carla. Yeah, I think I'm next. Um, I don't know if you want to answer just the last question. Someone mentioned that there's their son, Sergio Lizama, um, he was marked tardy, but he wasn't actually tardy. So if you have a, a, the question is about a specific student, it's, I don't want to answer it publicly, but if you call our office, um, either Sonia or Myrna will be able to help you. So I'm putting our phone number into chat right now. That's our phone number. So please call so that they can um, answer your questions. All right, so Daniela, um, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Yeah, go ahead and share my screen. Oh, share it. <laughs> yeah? No, it's disabled. Oh, here, I got you. There you go. Thank you. Hi everyone, good morning. Uh, I'm Daniela, I'm the Gear Up Coordinator. I work specifically with the class of 2023 and the class of 2024. So there are our current 10th graders and our current 11th graders. But I wanna invite you all, I wanna invite all grade levels and parents to come to our workshop. It'll be hosted next week via Zoom on Wednesday, January 26th at 11 a.m. We will be going over the different types of financial aid and how your student can apply and qualified for all the different types of aid. You can visit the Zoom link. I will also post it in the chat for you to save. Thank you very Thank you. much, Daniela. All right, Ms. Martinez, would you like to talk a little bit about attendance? Awesome. You're muted, though. Can you guys see my slide? Yes. Is it the whole slide? or? Yeah, I can see the whole slide. Is that one? Okay. So um, good morning, everybody. I'm Miss Martinez, the PSA counselor. I was out last semester, but now I'm back. And today I wanted to talk about absences. So here are some of the reasons that an absence can be excused. So one, one of the main reasons right now is quarantine. So if your child tests positive for COVID or is a close contact and they have to quarantine, that's one of the main reasons that we have most of the absences right now. That would count as an excused absence. If your child is sick or is injured, if they have a medical, dental, um, or any type of medical appointments, that would also count as excused, but you do have to provide a note for further appointments. If your student is over the age of 18 and they have jury duty, or if they have to attend a funeral of an immediate family member. So that's one day that they're excused if the funeral is in state and three days if they're out of state or out of the country. So these are just some examples of excused absences. And in order to make sure that we excuse the absence in the system, you do have to call or send a note um, so that we can have it for our records. Examples of unexcused absences are running errands for the family. So if you're busy and you send your student to the grocery store instead of coming to school, that's not excused or if there's any vacations or trips um, planned for your family, or babysitting younger siblings, or if you just call in and say there's a family emergency, but don't give a reason why, that would still be unexcused. 
if there's transportation problems or, or weather problems, that would still be considered unexcused um, because uh, even if there are weather or transportation problems, the child can still make it to school even if, if they're running a little bit late. There are other um, unexcused absences, but these are some examples of the most common um, unexcused absences. And then if you look um, on the report card, when you receive the report card every five weeks, this is where you can check how many absences your student has for that grading period and in total, and how many tardies your student has. So how many periods your student has been tardy um, to. And then this is where you check what their grade has been for that grading period. So here it is in, in Spanish um, where it shows the, their absences and their tardies as well as their grades for that grading period. So what should you do if your child is absent? So first of all, ensure that the school has your, your correct contact information, your phone number, your address, and also updated emergency contacts. So like Ms. Debogian mentioned, we do send, or the district sends automatic calls when your child is late to class or is absent for the day. So we just make sure that, that you're at least aware that your child is not there. Or if we need to personally call you, that we have the correct contact information. And along with that also that they're spacing your voice messages because sometimes we can't even leave a message. Um, another thing you can do is schedule vacations and appointments during non-school hours and days. So winter break, spring break, weekends if possible or summer vacation. And also monitor your child's attendance by contacting the school and checking their report card also logging in and checking on the parent portal. So if you have any questions, you can check that same day. And most importantly, make sure you communicate with us um, about, about their absences so we can excuse them on our end. And even, and sometimes, uh, you know, teachers do make mistakes when they're taking attendance or we make mistakes in the office. So if that happens, same thing, bring it to our attention and we'll make sure to correct the problem. And sometimes the kids say that they were present or that they didn't miss a class. So we're able to clarify that with, with the teachers and with the students to make sure everybody's being honest about their, their absences and everybody's on the same page. So on the, on the screen, it's the, um, the school phone number so you guys can call, so everybody can call the office if you guys have any questions. And that is all. Um, if you guys have any questions, I can, Take them. There is one question. I think it's about specifically attendance. It says, what if the student is sick, but there's no need to go to the doctor? The parents can call and let us know that they're sick. But if it's more than more than one day or two days, we do need to have a doctor's note um, to, because if they're that sick, they should be going to the doctor. But if it's a one time thing, they can call and let us know. And it should be the parent calling, not the student calling. To, to let us know that they're going to be absent. There's also a question about how to upload uh, test results. I'm gonna show you real quick by sharing my screen. So when a student logs into um, Daily Pass, which you see right here, um, in the menu here, there's the second item, which says submit external non-LAUSD COVID-19 test result. And if you click on that, that is where you can say, um, if the student is doing it, they say self. If a parent is doing it, they say student. And they fill this out. They say when the test was, what was the result, what was the day. And when you click next, it asks you to upload a picture. So I'll go back to first so this is what you see when you first log in and again it's the second link it says submit external non-LAUSD COVID-19 test result. Um, there was also another question regarding um, the gear up meeting. Uh, the question is if it will be recorded in case a parent can't make it. Daniela will you be recording that meeting? 
Yeah, we can definitely record it and then I'll share it with you to post on the website. Perfect, we will do that. All right, and I see Erica, you have a question. Let me, I think your hand is still up. So let me um, give you the mic. Buenos días. Buenos días. Este, me puede traducir, por favor? Yeah, let's go. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Pero se le está yendo la onda a su teléfono, se me hace. ¿No se escucha? Me, yo sí las escucho. Ok, ahora sí ya. Se, ya la escuchamos también. Uh, muy buenos días. Este, tengo una pregunta. Um, ya escuché lo que estaban hablando sobre las normas de la escuela que nos pueden ayudar, pero hay veces que tenemos una... Yo sé que ahorita el personal está muy ocupado, pero a mí me han pasado varias cosas que, que no sé cómo hacerle. Y el lunes precisamente tuve un percance con, con Jesús, que mi esposo este, fue positivo en COVID, pero tenemos todas las pruebas, todas las, perdón, todas las vacunas. Y Jesús sí, se le hizo el miércoles. Um, ¿Qué está pasando adentro de la escuela si el niño no dice nada que está algún positivo de, de sus papás o de un familiar? Mm -hmm. So she wants to know, oh, gracias por su pregunta. Um, she said that what is going on within the school? If a, student, if a family member or somebody in the household tests positive and the student doesn't say anything at school, what is the school doing about that? Unfortunately, there isn't much we can do. We're dependent on the families being honest and reporting if they have a household positive case. And if they don't say anything, then the student um, ends up at school and there's no way we can disallow them. So we are dependent on the honesty of our students and families to report positive cases that are outside of the district and at home. Oh, sí, es lo que dijo que desafortunadamente no hay no podemos hacer nada. Estamos dependiendo completamente en que los estudiantes y las familias sean honestos y, y nos avisen de esto porque no tenemos control sobre los casos positivos fuera del distrito si no nos avisan. Ok, por eso les vuelvo a repetir. Yo uh -huh. soy honesta. Sí, le agradecemos no quiero... eso, ¿verdad? Entonces, uh, me pasó un percance. Yo llamé a la escuela y me dijeron que Jesús se podía presentar y lo llevé a la escuela porque no uh -huh. tenía ningún síntoma uh -huh. y este el miércoles ayer precisamente se hizo la prueba y salió negativo uh -huh. pero yo creo que los demás tenemos que ser responsables de ser honestos porque uh -huh. todo esto que está ocasionando um, es un caos yo sé que la directora está al pendiente de todo pero sí es un riesgo muy grande para los demás estudiantes que no son este, honestos. Sí. Es, eh, y quiero reiterar que estoy agradecida con la directora, pero sí, la verdad, ahorita tengo dos llamadas de la escuela y regreso la llamada y no sé si, si sea por falta de personal que no mm. me regresaron la llamada. No sé por qué tengo esa llamada ahorita. Y eran dos, dos llamadas de escuela de STEM. Y no me, no me comunica nadie. Ok, sí. Es lo, estamos tratando um, de hacer lo mejor de, para contestar todas las llamadas y regresar llamadas. So, por cualquier cosa que, que, ¿verdad? Si no puede ponerse en contacto con alguien de la oficina, intentar a, a un tiempo más tarde o igual tratar de mandar co correo electrónico, pero sí tratamos, estamos tratando de contestar todas las llamadas que entran. El, el volumen es muy alto y no tenemos suficiente um, personal, pero sí, ahorita puedo dejar una nota escrita para poder regresarle la llamada y, 
y tratar de resolver el problema. Sí, mis, uh, le agradezco mucho y la verdad que sí me tiene luego así como en, ¿cómo se llama? En, en ansiedad, estrés, sí. en estrés, porque yo soy una mamá diabética y eso a mí me perjudica porque quiero saber si está pasando algo con Jesús y no se comunica a nadie, no quiero correr a la escuela, eso uh -huh. me causa a mí un poquito de estrés. Yo sé que están ocupados y cuando uh -huh. me, me comunico con ustedes siempre son amables conmigo. Eso sí reitero, todas la, las personas que he llamado siempre son amables. Entonces, sí, eso es un poquito de ansiedad para mí porque ya llamé cuatro veces y no regresan la llamada. Y yo creo que es todo mi comentario y le agradezco a la, a la directora que esté haciendo este tipo de otra vez de, de juntas a los papás que podemos en la mañana o en la tarde y que tengan feliz día tarde y sigo con la con la transmisión de ustedes gracias so she's she's grateful that um that you're having um coffee with the principal tea with the principal to answer all these questions um she was just a little bit frustrated gets a little bit nervous when she receives calls from the school but she calls back and nobody's able to answer so i told her we'd personally call her back after the meeting Um, but, um, I, I comentó alguien que las llamadas son, um, por el café con la directora. So, si, uh, cuando va a empezar la junta, también salen llamadas automáticas para hacer el recordatorio. So, a lo mejor serán unas de las llamadas que salieron en la mañana. So, she said that she received a couple of calls this morning. And then on the Q&A, um, one of the parents answered that they were the reminders for the, for the coffee with the principal. Yes, yeah, we did send out a phone call to everyone. Okay, thank you, Erica. Um, so there is a question from Mary about their um, son missing, I think the first few days. Um, but I don't know what the rest of the question is asking. They want to know, uh, Mary wants to know how they can fix the absences. Okay. So them. in order to excuse absences, you must call the school or send a note with your child. Um, for the first 10 days, um, the first, the student tested when they tested positive. I'm not sure what that is. Let's see. Um, I'm reading through the chat. I want to know um, which day would be considered day one of the 10 days when, when a student tests positive, what day would be considered day one? So the, let's say you get tested on Wednesday, the 19th, that is day zero. So day one is the next day. Um, and then there's a question from Dora about where's the link for the meeting on the 26th. Um, that link is on the Google Calendar and that calendar is on our website. And um, Mary Lou, anyone can take the antigen tests, um, come back, they've tested positive, recently tested if they cannot do a PCR test. Um, show symptoms of cold are they being sent home so when students exhibit symptoms we do some send them home yes and the students who have tested positive the reason why they don't test again for pcr tests for the next three months is because they are immune and they're also not contagious um, that lasts for about three months And then they are, again, um, like the rest of us, um, meaning they can get sick again and they can be contagious again. And when that happens, they become tested again. So the period of time that they don't do a PCR test um, is a period of time that they are not contagious and they are um, immune from contracting COVID. Um, so that is the upside. Um, let's see, and the link again, thank you, Daniela, for gear up. Um, let's see, 
I'm not sure Blanca was Blanca's asking. Um, I was answering that the calls that went out this morning were oh, for coffee for, with the principal. Right. And then they were saying that if they don't answer, a message is left, like the voice message is left. So okay. there were a couple that say that. And then anything else to, um, from this, Ronaldo or Mary? So Mary says that she called the school, but she only gets the answering machine and she left a message. Um, should she just leave it like that or should she try to call back again? You can call back again, Mary. Um, but also we are we do return all the, the messages that are left. Um, today and tomorrow will be really busy for us. This morning, we already had 15 positive cases. So we are busy contact tracing and the most of the test results are still pending. And so as the day goes on, those test results come in and um, almost everyone in the office counselors also will be contact tracing for all of Thursday and Friday. And we will do our best to also answer any questions that um, come up from our parents and family members. Um, I see Jose, Josue Cruz, my apologies, your hand is up. I'm going to go ahead and um, unmute you. Josue, did you have a question? Muted too. Oh, Mr. Ronaldo Chavez, uh, do you have a question? Hola, buenos días. Hola. Bueno. Uh, sí, una nada más quería decir uh, que las llamadas que fueron de ahorita temprano era por el café con la directora, por eso están llamando. Este era mi comentario nada más. I just wanted to comment that um, the calls that were sent out this morning were, were reminders for coffee with the principal. Sí, muchas gracias por el comentario. Y, y gracias you. por dejarnos saber que sí están llegando esas llamadas. Uh, sí, están llamando, pero es por eso. Igual son mensajes que están dejando es por café con la directora. Sí, gracias. Thank gracias. you. Feliz Thank día. You. Igualmente. And then Josue Cruz said it was an, he accidentally pushed the hand up. Uh, but in. All right. I see um, Ochoa Marites. You have your hand up. Do you have a question? Uh, yes. I, I have uh, two questions. One is for uh, what is the phone number for community engagement? And the second question is uh, what is an antigen test? Thank you. So first I will put the community engagement phone number in the chat. And that phone number is 213-725-5637. Just a warning, they are, um, th there's long wait times for community engagement. Um, as you can imagine with, you know, so many students testing positive. Um, an antigen test is a rapid test, meaning it takes much less time than a PCR test. So an antigen test takes about 15 minutes and it only is detecting whether or not the body is having an immune, immune system response to COVID. Um, it is not as sensitive as a PCR test. A PCR test takes about uh, a day or two, depending on who is administering. And that is actually looking for the genetic material of the virus. So whether or not you have symptoms, if the virus is in your body, um, the, vi the PCR test takes longer because it actually looks for that DNA, that genetic material of the virus and finds it um, if it's there. So 
one is quicker, a little less accurate. That's the antigen test. PCR is slower and much more accurate. And it's the reason why people who test positive can't take a PCR test because even though um, the genetic material of the virus is still in their body, it is no longer uh, contagious or infectious. Their body has already beat it. It's already conquered it. Um, it's just sitting in its body, not in your body, not doing anything anymore. And so taking a PCR test doesn't show really that you're still sick. It just shows that um, you have genetic material of the virus still in your body. I hope uh, that explains. Yes. So the, the antigen test is the same kit that we received from the school, the rapid test kits. Is that the same yes. thing? Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I got it. Thank you. All right, thank you. And um, Evelyn Garcia, I see your hand is up. Um, what questions might you have? Hi, um, good morning. Good morning. Um, I'm, I apologize in advance if I'm gonna be, you know, venting a little bit, but it has been a little frustrating and confusing this whole process. So last week, my son got a letter at school uh, on Thursday saying that he had been in close contact with somebody that was positive. Um, he never got the results from the Wednesday test. Mm -hmm. um, and then they emailed me saying that uh, his case was closed and that he can return to school because he was fully vaccinated. Um, the problem was that he started showing symptoms on Saturday. So he hasn't been to school and I was not able to get, uh, get him tested because I wasn't able to make an appointment through the daily pass for somebody with symptoms. So I called the uh, number for the, uh, uh, what, what's it called? The, uh, the community engagement. Community engagement. And, and yes, I can attest that they are very slow. I spent my whole lunch, uh, 22 minutes on hold. Um, yes. And their advice was that um, I should just maybe not be as honest and say that he didn't have symptoms. Wow. <laughs> Um, because maybe that would be a faster way of getting him tested or that I can just go to the LA County site and find uh, an, a, you know, a test site from there, which is what I did. So I got him an appointment today for that. Um, but it's going, it's going to be a little confusing for me because he started having symptoms on Saturday, but I don't know what day would be his first day if I haven't gotten him tested yet. So I'm going to I'm going to give you some information that is accurate and then I'm going to tell you that community engagement is going to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> so the technically day 0 is the first day you have symptoms or the day you test positive whatever is earlier. So if you know you have symptoms on a Tuesday and then you don't get tested until Saturday and you test positive technically you should start counting on Tuesday because that's the first day you were actually contagious because you had symptoms. Unfortunately, when you submit positive test results to community engagement on daily pass, they start counting on the day you had the positive test, not the day you have symptoms, which is why I always encourage our students and parents to call community engagement so they can correct that error um, so that you know your quarantine period of time is not as long as they're telling you. Um, I don't know how to fix this error that they are making. And we rely, you know, on parents like you and students to just tell us like, hey, my day zero was actually on this day. And then we, you know, allow them our campus, even though um, the daily pass is saying this aloud as long as they're showing us you know that they got tested appropriately and they're not having any symptoms anymore but that's really the best advice I can give you right now to get tested and then call community engagement again to let them know that symptoms actually started much sooner than the test okay thank you of course and I'm so sorry All right. Um, um, 
let's see. I Ale had asked what the number was, and then I answered it was community yeah. engagement. Um, and then in the Q and A, um, you know, sería mejor que los niños tuvieran las clases. Wouldn't it be better if the kids had virtual classes to to avoid um, COVID cases in school? Is what she asked. Yes, it would be. Um, I would have loved to have had delayed the start of the second semester by at least two weeks or so to allow Omicron to sort of blow over. But unfortunately, um, that decision was not left to um, school principals or school sites. But yes, I agree with you. That would have been much better. Um, I think Mary is asking is if if the daily pass will work during the three months that the student can't get tested, right? Is that what the question is? No, she's asking that during the three months that the student can't test, um, does she have to um, test the student, provide an antigen test for the student and upload oh. it to the daily pass weekly? Or does she uh, just not test the student for three months? Yeah, no, the student just doesn't test for three months. Um, no, no antigen or PCR. If the student needs an antigen test because of another reason, um, we can provide them with one, but they shouldn't be getting any type of COVID test for three months if they tested positive. Um, I see Gladys, your Gladys Sarmiento, your um, hand is up. Um, what questions do you have? Buenos días. Buenos días. Tengo una pregunta. Eh, mi hija salió positiva unos días atrás y esperamos los 10 días eh, para que fuera a la escuela. Durante esos 10 días le hice la prueba dos veces y salió negativa. Eh, entonces ya pudo ir a la escuela y le dijeron que no le van a estar haciendo la prueba hasta dentro de 90 días. Entonces yo quisiera saber cómo, cómo vamos a, a estar protegidos o cómo voy a saber de que pues mi nena va a estar bien. Sí, durante los 90 días no les hacen la prueba porque um, no le podría salir positivo aunque no estuviera contagiosa la niña, ¿verdad? Porque todavía queda la parte inactiva del virus en el sistema de la niña. Um, pero si ella necesita una prueba de antígeno por cualquier razón, decir que ella tenga síntomas, entonces nos puede avisar y, y le podemos hacer una prueba de antígeno. Pero um, ella no necesita ningún tipo de prueba por 90 días. Ah, bueno, y las dos que yo le hice aquí en casa y salieron negativas, tendrían uh -huh. que salir también negativas en la escuela. Um, el, el problema es que en la escuela nomás um, proveen pruebas de antígeno y sí. uh, digo pruebas de PCR. So, esas no puede tomar porque le puede salir positivo otra vez, aunque no esté contagiosa la niña. Y si uh -huh. salen este, esas pruebas de PCR positiva durante los 90 días, entonces abre otro caso de COVID que la por, pondría en cuarentena otra vez. Sí. ¿Verdad? O so, las pruebas que usted le salió negativas, usted la puede uh, subir al Daily Pass, si usted gusta. Sí, sí. esa es la que usamos. Uh -huh. oh, ok. Sí. sí. Ah, bueno, entonces si ella necesita una prueba, podría pedirla en la escuela. Sí, decir que tenga síntomas o cualquier otra razón que usted piense que ella necesite una prueba, podría pedir acá, venir a la oficina y, 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 y decirnos, sí. Ah, bueno, está bien, muchas gracias. Sí, de nada, gracias a usted. All right, I don't see any other hands up. Um, or questions in the chat. So I wanna just thank everyone for your patience. This has been an incredibly difficult time. It has been um, a very stressful time. And I just wanna thank you for always participating. Oh, there is one more hand up. CAWA29, there we go. Okay, I have a question. Uh, yeah. So my son, he was sent home because he was in close contact. In close contact, but his test resulted in negative on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Last Wednesday. And okay. so he was in close contact. And I couldn't get him tested until 
Monday. Okay, so um, it kind of depends on what kind of a close contact he was. We have two different categories. We have close so he contact. Doesn't, he doesn't uh -huh. have any symptoms, but but in the Kaiser test, he tested positive. Mm, once he tests positive, he has to quarantine for 10 days. Okay, so it doesn't count the day that he was in close contact with that person. So um, for positive, the, the way you count for positive cases is day zero is either the day you test positive or the day you start having symptoms. So because he doesn't have symptoms, his day zero would be the day he started, um, he tested positive. Yeah, the counting of the days has to do with um, like when you're contagious, basically. That's how they count it. Okay. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, then. Oh, Erica. Let's see. I see I have two hands up. Erica, do you have another question? Okay, hey, Flor Cruz, um, did you have a question? Yo tengo una pregunta. Okay, Erica, sí. Es sobre lo médico. Solo una pregunta. Uh, uh, ¿Qué pasa? Bueno, cuando le dejan tarea a los niños a uh, en cierto decir ejemplo, que este día venga Jesús y me dice que tiene mucha tarea y que la tiene que entregar a cierta y no la entrega. Yo puedo mandar un correo electrónico al maestro que le dé más tiempo al niño para entregar su trabajo. I'm not sure I caught uh, all that. Yeah, so she's saying like if if the teacher gives them a deadline for assignments, but her student isn't able to complete the assignment by the deadline, what can she do to get an extension for the assignment? Um, that's a, a case by case basis, um, meaning if the student needs an extension because, for example, they were sick or they were you know, absent for another excused reason, then yes, they can get an extension. If the student is experiencing difficulties with the assignment itself, then they need to talk to the teacher and come up with a way so that the student can get support. Um, and that could mean that they come to tutoring or they um, have an extension. So it sort of depends on the reason and that student needs to work with the teacher to figure out um, how to best get support. Esto, porque no sé si escucha la traducción con Sandra, es de que depende de la razón. Uh, es caso por caso de la razón por qué necesita una extensión, ¿verdad? Si está, si es porque está enfermo o, o cualquier otra razón excusable, si, si puede hablar con la maestra usted y pedir extensión. Si es que está teniendo dificultad con la materia o, o con la, la tarea, um, el niño uh, puede hacer arreglos individualmente con cada maestro para ver cómo lo pueden apoyar para completar las tareas. Eso es caso por caso y pueda nomás mantener comunicación con, la, con los maestros sobre sobre eso y con la oficina también si es por por una ausencia um, bueno a lo mejor entendió mi bien mi pregunta con el que el Jesús llegó con una tarea el el autobús lo deja usualmente hasta las 5 de la tarde aquí en mi casa uh -huh. en lo que tarea tuvo una tarea que me dijo que tenía que entregar la cierta hora uh, como él también tiene, mi hijo tiene autismo, en una de esas ocasiones él causa estrés, causa desesperación en que no va a realizar bien la tarea. Entonces yo le dije que si yo le podía ayudar en mandar un mensaje al maestro para que le pudiera dar unas horas más de entregar ese trabajo porque era mucho. Y él me dijo que no, lo sentí muy capaz 
en hacerlo, solamente lo tranquilicé. Pero en el futuro, si cae en esta, ¿cómo le diré? Esta ansiedad, ¿eh? esta frustración, que si en esto puedo hacerlo yo. Sí, sí puede hablar y comunicarse con nosotros o con los maestros. Y decir, como dice, que si la tiene que entregar a, a cierta hora, nos puede comunicar si hay, ¿verdad? Que si está estresado o, ¿verdad? Um, no sé cuánto tiempo le den para entregar la tarea o Ajá. de cuándo le, cuando le dan la, la instrucción de empezar la tarea y a, a, la, a, la, a la hora que, se, que, le, que lo tengan que entregar. Pero sí, comunicándose con nosotros siempre podemos ¿verdad? buscar una solución porque no queremos ¿verdad? causarle daño al niño y no es, no es el punto ¿verdad? de la tarea o de estresarlo. So, sí, um, si se comunica con nosotros, podemos ver cómo podemos apoyarlo, ¿verdad? Bueno, muchas gracias. Sí, sí, de nada. Sí, los maestros, por, por la, may la mayoría de los maestros, o todos los de los maestros, también uh, están ahí para apoyar a los estudiantes. So, lo que necesite, estamos a la orden. Sí, sí, mis, pero el único problema es que siempre con el mismo maestro, cuando hay juntas de, de materia, para entregar las calificaciones, este me está ausente o no está disponible para mí, yo le mandé mensajes y he contestado. Uh -huh. Sí, si sí, tiene un problema, si sí, uh, una preocupación con un maestro en, específicamente, puede dejarnos saber a nosotros, a las consejeras o a la oficina, para que de nuestro, de nuestro lado también le, le pasemos el mensaje o, o, o busquemos, le busquemos respuesta o que le conteste el maestro, ¿verdad? Hacer un plan ya involucrándonos a nosotros. Bueno, está bien, sí, muchas pues, gracias. Sí. Sí, de nada. Uh, con que nos deje saber, le podemos ayudar. She was asking if it's a, she tries to communicate with the teacher, but it's the same teacher that doesn't reply or it doesn't make themselves available for conferences. So I just told her to get us involved and we can help with that communication. Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. Um, Flor uh, Cruz, did you have a question? Your hand was up. Buenos días. Buenos días. Uh, pues como estaba diciendo la otra mamá, hay maestros que no, no este, contestan. De hecho, mi hijo el año pasado, le, como tres días después, la maestra le contestó el mensaje. Uh -huh. Y este y ahorita a lo mejor no viene el caso, ¿verdad? Pero ahorita estoy llamando para dar una queja del periodo 6. Hay una uh -huh. maestra que ayer le hizo mi hijo. Pasó la lista y le dijo que fuera la dirección y, este, y que dijera que aquí está. Entonces, cuando regresó, a la, al salón, dijo que tenía su, su nombre en el pizarrón que estaba ausente. Y entonces él no entendió cuál fue el, el, o sea, cuál era la razón que él tenía que ir a la dirección, a la oficina, para, para decir que él estaba presente, si la maestra estaba pasando la lista. Y ya va, van varias veces quejas que me da mi hijo de, de la maestra, es el, del periodo 6, él está en el grado 11. Um, las, las, hace como dos semanas este, dijo él que la maestra por cualquier cosa que estaba buscando su teléfono que paró la clase para buscar su teléfono dice o sea eso es quitar tiempo así hace preguntas tontas dice él que no, no, no sabe que le ayudara no me acuerdo qué dijo él entonces este, él ya está como bien frustrado porque porque ayer, ayer, pues, que más se enojó, porque dice, yo no entiendo, dice, ¿por qué me mandó si ella es la que tenía que hacer la, la, la lista? Es el de la maestra. ¿Cómo se llama su estudiante? A Sergio Lezama. Sergio, ok. So, después de la junta podemos ver qué, qué pasó específicamente con, con eso para resolverle el problema. So, she says she's ah. having difficulty with her students. Um, period six teacher, they sent them to the office. Um, To, to say that he was present, but when he got back to class, they had marked him absent. So I, I told her I'd call her back to resolve it after. Perfecto. So, si vamos a, a ver sí, qué podemos hacer. Si son papás que, que, este, que tienen sus hijos de, de 11 grado, que pregunten a sus hijos, porque la masa, pues, como que no sabe, solo es una sustituta. Este, y sí, mi hijo me trae muchas quejas de ella. So she said that it's a substitute teacher and um, she's had repeated complaints about the same teacher from her student, that the teacher stopped the class to look for her cell phone, things like that. For who, her own cell phone? Mm -hmm. 
el teléfono de ella que no lo encontraba y paró la clase para buscar su teléfono y le dijo a los niños que alguien le llamara porque no sabía dónde encontró su teléfono. Uh, she was asking the students to call her cell phone so she can find it. Oh. And then, so she's asking any other 11th grade um, parents who have the same teacher to, to, to ask their kids if how it's going in that class and to see if there are any other complaints. I mean, to be very transparent, um, we have many subs at STEM right now, and there is also a substitute shortage. And there is, unless any of you know of any reliable substitutes, it's very difficult right now to find subs. And there are many teachers that are out. And so um, we are doing the best we can with the people that we have. Um, and I appreciate, you know, that you bringing these instances, incidents to my attention. Um, however, there isn't much I can do in terms of, there isn't anyone I can replace these people with. That is the issue. So, uh, la, la directora le agradece que, que nos deje saber de estos incidentes y de estos problemitas um, para, ¿verdad? tratar de resolver esto, pero desafortunadamente ahorita no, no hay suficientes sustitutos, maestros sustitutos para reemplazar los maestros que estén, um, que estén fuera por enfermedad o por, por cualquier otra razón, porque no hay suficientes sustitutos en el distrito en, en general, ¿verdad? So, si, si, hay, si ustedes conocen a sustitutos que puedan venir, ¿verdad? Es, es, le agradeceríamos, pero en general no hay suficiente personal para cubrir todas las ausencias ahorita por, ¿verdad? por lo que está pasando. Pero sí, ¿verdad? no podemos reemplazar a ningún sustituto ahorita, mm, pero sí, uh, pero sí ¿verdad? podemos tratar de, de hablar con ellos sobre los problemas que están pasando para corregir este comportamiento de, de ellos, ¿verdad? Porque no es aceptable que también los sustitutos tengan estos comportamientos. So, sí, gracias por traerlo a nuestra atención. I see there's another hand up. Uh, Noemi, do you have a question, Noemi? There's also a question. Sí, from, buenos días. Yes. Sí. Bueno. Bueno. A ver, uh, solo para, para que pueda yo entender mejor el, el tema. Sí. Ok, si el niño, si vamos a decir el alumno, el alumno sale positivo, vamos a decir. Okay. En la siguiente semana que eh, eh, le vuelven a hacer, vamos a decir, el, el test se lo hicieron el viernes uh -huh. y en la siguiente semana sale positivo. Uh -huh. So si el, el primer. Uh, la prim uh -huh. y, y este y se hace una prueba. De, un anti, ¿Qué es anti antígeno? Ajá, sí, Ajá, antígeno. Sí. Y le sale negativo. Sí. Tiene que esperar, tiene que esperar los otros, son otros cinco días para regresar a la escuela. Entonces, so, si su estudiante es, es, está vacunado, ¿verdad? Y El, eh, después de esa prueba ya no se tiene que hacer ninguna por parte de la escuela. Por 90 días, sí. Correcto. So, si, su, si su estudiante salió okay. positivo, um, puede, la, la cuarentena eh, y, es de 10 días. La, esa sí. era fuera la primera opción. La segunda opción era poner en cuarentena al alumno, vamos a decir. Sí. Eh, y en la tercera opción que dice que en qué casos puede regresar a la escuela. Mm, So, si el estudiante sale positivo, eh, la cuarentena es de 10 días, ¿verdad? Si el, el quinto día uh, le hacen la prueba de antígeno, 
eh, puede regresar el estudiante el sexto día, ¿verdad? Pero tienen que subir la, la prueba negativa de antígeno al Daily Pass y hablar directamente con, con uh, Community Engagement para que le puedan resolver el problema de Daily Pass porque queda bloqueado el estudiante sin poder entrar. So, ellos son los únicos que pueden desbloquearlo, ¿verdad? Revisan la prueba de antígeno y le desbloquean el Daily Pass. Entonces, ya después de, como la primera prueba salió positiva y esa era prueba PCR, entonces, entonces después de que ya subieron la prueba negativa de, de antígenos, ya no pueden tomar ninguna prueba por 90 días porque les puede salir positiva. Si durante esos 90 días el estudiante tiene síntomas o tienen cualquier otra razón por qué tienen que tomar una prueba, tendrían que venir a la oficina y, y avisarnos um, para poder darles una prueba de antígeno porque las pruebas PCR no se las van a tomar por 90 días aquí en el distrito. No sé si eso le contesta la pregunta. ¿Me lo puede traducir, por favor? Sí, va de nuevo. Um, si ese estudiante um, saca prueba positiva, ¿verdad? Si resulta positivo su... Es que su... lo tengo en, en, la, en la traducción, en el, en el idioma. Y me lo tradujeron en inglés. Ajá. Oh, porque la traducción es en inglés como yo estaba dando la respuesta en español. Sí, ok. So, si su estudiante sale positivo con la prueba que le hacemos aquí o con la prueba que haya tomado en otro lugar, se abre un caso de, de COVID positivo para su Pero estudiante. No se, ¿No se oye? ¿Me escucha a mí o escucha a Sandra? Sí, diga. ¿A quién escucha a mí? She's listening to Sandra, so answer okay. in English. Oh, yeah. okay. Okay, so I had answered in Spanish because I thought she was hearing me on this screen. So she's just asking again for the quarantine sí. um, timeline for um, for the po for a positive case. Okay, the positive cases must quarantine for 10 days. Day zero is the, the day you test positive or the day you have symptoms, whatever is earlier. Mm -hmm. And if you want to come back early, you have to get an antigen test on day five and you can come back early on day six. Right. Uh -huh. However, I encourage everyone to quarantine the full 10 days just to be on, on, the, sta on the safe side. Um, if your student is a close contact and um, their test. Okay. Sí, ya me aclaró. <laughs> okay. Este, otra pregunta. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Naomi. <laughs> I see there is another question. Ahora la the... escucho en español. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I see there's another question in the chat. Um, it says my son was in close contact. PCR test is negative. Um, um, when can he go to school? This is a complicated question <laughs> because I don't know if the test was on day five or not. If that PCR test was taken before day five, and your student was symptomatic or unvaccinated, then they may not return to school. If that test was on day five, then your child can return to school the next day. If your child was vaccinated, they should have never been at home <laughs> because vaccinated asymptomatic close contacts are exempt from quarantine. 
So as you can see, that unfortunately has a complicated answer for close contacts. And then Flor um, asked if the test is, just wanted to confirm that the test is every Wednesday on campus. Yes. yes. And then Ma Maria Munar. Um, Mary Lou or Maria Munar? Oh, I don't see Mary Lou. Maria Munar on Q&A. Um, if the students got the PAS cards from school, I'm not sure what that is. I don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the, that card is. Um, in the chat, it says the test was done on day six. Then yes, the student may return on day six as long as um, they're not symptomatic. Mary Lou, do you have a question? I see your hand is up. I do, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure there's no echo. Um, so I have a quick question and this is, well, not really regarding the vaccines, but it is a concern. It happened a while ago, and I just want to make sure I haven't really asked my son um, if that was corrected. Um, but there was a situation where it seemed like you guys were very short staffed and the bathrooms um, had become an issue. Um, I know you guys are monitoring, you know, the amount of students that could be in the bathroom at a certain, um, you know, time. And the bathrooms in each floor seem to have been locked down and there was only one bathroom available per floor, um, which I was really upset because the week that that happened, my son just happened to get sick. And when I, you know, uh, talked to him about that, he said, well, he didn't even have a way to wash his hands before he had to eat lunch. So he was using hand sanitizer. And to be honest with you, that just blew my head, like steam out of my head. And I was so upset. I did call the school. I don't know if you were aware of this because I made sure that, you know, I let your staff know. Um, and it seemed like for a while they had corrected the problem. But again, like I said, I haven't checked with my son this week to see if that was corrected or not, because I just want to ensure that if I'm making the, the, the sacrifice to send my son to school, regardless of him being informed this week that he was in close contact with somebody that had COVID and we're taking all the possible precautions at home and doing everything that we have to do. I just want to make sure my son is safe when he goes to school. And I hope that you guys can understand that. So I just want to make sure that the bathrooms are available to them for them to wash their hands, that they have hand sanitizer, soap, that it's always stocked up. And, you know, I, I really hope that you guys could understand that, um, you know, frustration and how I felt hearing that those bathrooms were not available for them. Of course. Um, thank you for voicing your concern. And yeah, you're right. There was a period of time where the bathrooms were being vandalized and students were actually um, knocking the soap off like they were taking the soap off the walls and destroying the bathrooms. And we were having a difficult time um, fixing everything in time. And that was my biggest concern too, that the students had nowhere to wash their hands. There was never a period of time where there wasn't at least one bathroom available for a student to do that. Um, typically, how it works normally is that there is a single restroom on every floor that has always been that case. And then there's restrooms on the uh, ground floor for lunchtime. Um, and for a period of time, the only restrooms that were available were the ones on the ground floor during lunchtime. Um, so currently all restrooms are open. So every restroom on each floor plus the cafeteria restrooms and the quad are open. We're hoping that the vandalization does not resurface. Um, it was a really stupid TikTok thing um, that went on for way longer than it should have. Um, and hopefully now that's over because um, we haven't seen any vandalization or any destruction happening since we've been back, thank goodness. 
Thank you for answering that. Appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Um, all right. And I see, um, I see another hand up. Um, Floor, uh, you still have a question? Oh, and Ms. Munar's question is about the tap cards. Tap cards were passed out last semester. Flor, did you have another question? No, fue un accidente, Sandra. Ya lo bajé o no? Oh, accident. Got it. Okay. Okay. No problem. Uh, has a comment. Who? Mary Umlas on the chat. Oh. Oh, yeah. We're continuing to do that. That's not going to stop anytime soon. We have a per person, temp not temporarily, permanently posted outside the restrooms who goes inside and checks after students go in and out. So a student will go in and when they leave, they go check. Um, so our tap cards came before winter break. And so we gave it to the first period teachers to pass out to all of our students. And that's what we did. We did not receive any more tap cards from the district. All right. Um, okay, thank you again, everyone. Please give us a call in the office if you have further questions. Um, and I hope to see you at the next tea with the principal, which will be in the afternoon. And we will send out phone calls again as reminders and I will include the flyer in my newsletter. Thank you. And I hope to see all of you soon. Bye, everyone.